Hello, good afternoon. I uh, hope you can all hear me okay. Um, I'm just going to turn on my webcam as well, so you guys should be able to see me. Um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're going to be talking about colour um, in, in digital printing. So we're going to be having a bit of an introduction. It's not going to be hugely in-depth. Um, what I've got is a little presentation that we're going to run through. And um, as I'm running through the, the presentation, feel free to ask questions, which you can do so via the chat box. So see some of you have already, already found that. Um, if anybody could just uh, type in the little chat box uh, and just let me know that you can hear me okay, that would be great. Um, so I see a few of you are chatting there. Just wait for those to come in before I carry on in case you guys can't hear me. Uh, I can turn it up from my end, but what you might need to do is turn it up at your end. You could put headphones in, it might help. You might want to check your connection as well. Um, you can all hear it. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So um, we'll carry on then. Um, most of today is going to be, as I said, this little presentation. At the end, we'll stop for a question and answer session if there's anything that you don't understand, if there's anything you'd like me to go over again, uh, or if you want to go into a little bit more depth with some of the parts. Uh, it's going to be pretty basic um, as, a, as, a, as an introduction to colour, but yeah, do feel free to ask questions, uh, and I'll try and uh, keep my eye on the chat box there uh, and see if I can answer them as they go along. So on your screens, you should be able to see uh, a colour fan, um, or a sort of, of a little swatch book kind of thing, uh, and that's the, the presentation that I'm going to be using. Uh, just a note as well that these webinars are recorded, so uh, this is going to be um, added to our website at some point. So just building a section at the moment to, to host where these all these webinars and all the old webinars that we've already done will be on our website, uh, which isn't finished at the moment, but we will have that down the line, so you should be able to watch these back. So when we're talking about colour, uh, I tend to split colour into two groups. Um, one is colour management, uh, and the other is spot colours. Okay. So the two kind of uh, refer to slightly different modules or different parts to do with colour uh, when we're talking about digital print or using your RIP as well. So to start with, we'll talk about colour management. So colour management is to do with process colours. Hopefully you guys can all see uh, the presentation moving on your screen. No fan you guys are saying? Uh, bear with me. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's actually it's it's show it's sharing my desktop, um, so it's a live feed that comes through. So depending on your internet connection, uh, it can sometimes be a little bit slow. Sorry. Let's try and refresh a minute then. Bear with me a minute. If you guys can see the color fan in the middle, should be able to see something now that says CM and spot at the top. Ah, there you go. Just needed a refresh. Sorry, guys. Internet, hey? Great thing, but sometimes it catches you out. Uh, there we go. So, um, okay, so we'll carry on. Um, so, as I said, you split color management uh, or color into color management and spot colors. Um, if we zoom in to start going into color management, um, color management refers to what happens to process colors okay so process colors uh, are referred to both rgb and cmyk colors within your design file so when you create a design uh, you have the option to use spot colors you can use process colors referring to either cmyk or rgb normally depending on how you set up your file and they're called process colors because they refer to uh, the sets of values so if we break that down a little bit, first of all, if we look at CMYK, um, you can see the CMYK colors on the left there, and on the right-hand side, what we've got is uh, some colors taken from a design. So this was using Illustrator. I just um, selected a color, and it's given me the CMYK values. They will be a number ranging from 0 to 100 for each of those color channels. So there's four color channels, and it will give you values from 0 to 100. That is the process colors for that color. Process meaning 
that there's four colors which will combine to create uh, a color. So hopefully that makes sense to start with. Then we've got RGB as well. So RGB also have color values, but the color values um, go from zero to 255 for both or for all three of the red, green, and blue channels. Okay, so it's slightly different to CMYK in that we have three channels and that the values are different. The values are different because we're referring to uh, light values which combine to create colors. Uh, whereas in CMYK, we, we're effectively in our print referring to ink levels that would be printed. So they're called process values. When you use process values, they will be tweaked or um, will depend on the color management that you use within your rig. So when you're using VersaWorks Dual uh, or VersaWorks, uh, in the, under the quality tab, you have an option at the bottom for color management and you have some presets that are available there. If you choose one of these presets, it will have a certain amount of uh, options within it that will interpret any CMYK or RGB values, process values within your design and what's going to happen with those as they come through the RIP. So the different settings, um, we're not going to go into those with too depth at the moment, in too much depth. I just want to explain that they will basically affect the different color values that are going to come through your RIP. So sometimes, for example, you might choose 100% cyan uh, and expect it to print 100% cyan. That's not necessarily the case. Because they're process values, uh, the, uh, the RIP is going to look at those values and it might tweak them depending on the color management settings that you choose. So just to expand on that a tiny bit, um, if you do choose just a CMYK set of values, that set of values doesn't actually hold all that, in, that much information you know, in terms of when we come to print. So if somebody said to me, could you please print, as we've got on the screen here, some CMYK values um, which are 74, 41, 90, and 37 okay that doesn't actually mean that much to me as a printer because if i print those values exactly as they are uh, the person who told me to print those values um, may be expecting a different result to what i'm going to get with my printer that's because those cmyk values could be shared across multiple devices so say somebody uh, went to a screen printer and said could you please screen print me uh, these values they then went to somebody who has um, a lipo press and said can you press me these values or somebody with a different uh, wide format printer then it means that these uh, these values don't have any value because because different printers or different processes are going to show those those values differently so therefore you're not going to get expected results um, so let's move on now. So from, from, from these process values that which we have, which are going to be tweaked by the color management, we then move on to looking at spot colors. Okay. So spot colors mean that we actually have some, some value um, to the numbers that we're going to be using. When you're referring to spot colors, uh, often people get confused or don't, don't really understand what, what a spot color is. Spot colors have two sets of values. So rather than process colors having one set of values, which means that they come into the RIP, the RIP looks at those values and it may tweak them depending on what color management settings you have. Spot colors have two sets of values, and there's also two types of spot color. Those two types are, are going to be colors um, or functions. So spot colors will have an input value and an output value. Spot colors can also have functions when it, when it comes to our RIP. So if we look at those functions, what I'm referring to are the special colors within your RIP. So in VersaWorks, we have spot colors that you can use in your design software for cut contour, for white ink, gloss ink if you have a UV device, uh, metallic ink, uh, a primer. Um, you can also create spot colors 
for perforated cut lines and for uh, variable data. Okay. So VersaWorks is programmed that when a spot color comes in and it has a specific name, so with the cut contour, it's a spot color and it's called cut contour or cut path with capital letters at the beginning of each word and no gap. When VersaWorks sees those values within the spot color, it knows to send a cut line rather than print a magenta color, which is the default color for the cut contour swatch. So hopefully that makes sense that it's actually telling you uh, a process rather than um, uh, a color, so to speak. So when we're talking about white ink, um, it's actually telling your machine to use a specific channel of ink within your machine, not a CMYK mix. That's the difference in terms of it having a function, it's telling it to use a channel from your machine. So that's spot colors in terms of functions, but if we look at actual colors, uh, within your design work, you can have different colors. Okay, so as we mentioned, you can have CMYK, you can have RGB, um, and you can have spot colors. And there's lots of different spot color libraries that you can have within your work. So um, if you look on your screen, there should be um, a, a design basically that, that I used had two colors in it. It had a Pantone color and a VersaWorks color. So when I brought that into VersaWorks, so let's just get VersaWorks up for you a second on your screens. Hopefully you can see VersaWorks now. Uh, I brought in this job and this job had two different colors, okay? It's got a Pantone color and a VersaWorks color. And in this box on the left-hand side, when we're in the file format tab, it's shown me these two colors. So that's where you can see that there's spot colors within this design file. And when I go into the details box within VersaWorks, it's showing me that we've got um, the two different colors, and it's showing me in this details box the library output and the printer output. So this is where I was referring to spot colors having two sets of values. The library output refers to the color that that spot color wants to be. Okay, so it's library values, the color that it should be. What we then have is a printer output. Now that is dependent on the quality that you're printing at, the material that you're printing on, the type of ink that you have, the printer that you're using all these different variables. So if we look on the screen, uh, the library output for this Roland color, RVWDK45G, I'll explain the Roland color systems library in just a moment, comes from the Roland color systems library. And the third little column there says the library output is 0, 49, 65, and 60 for the CMYK channels, okay? What my printer is actually going to print is two, 48.2, 63.9, and 60. So the values are tweaked slightly as they've gone into the RIP in order to achieve the library color. So that's the way that spot colors work. They have a library value, which is the color that it wants to be. It has a, a printer value, which is the colors it's going to print in order to achieve that color. So I just had a notice on my screen saying that my uh, internet connection seems to be going low. So let's just refresh a second. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Sorry. So just had a notice saying my internet connection wasn't going so well. So that's what, what spot colors, colors do. They have an input and an output, which means that we're going to get more accurate results. So what we can do in VersaWorks is we can print something called the Roland Color Systems Library, which is this little printout that I have here. Okay. So within the menu in VersaWorks, you have an option in the Media tab at the top where it says Print the Roland Color Systems Library. When you print out the Roland Color Systems Library, it prints a default set of spot colors, these Roland spot colors, which is just a nice spread of colors. It's not all of the colors that you can print from your device, it's just a good spread, okay? And the idea is that you can print out these spot colors and then you can use that chart for color matching. So say for example, somebody comes to you with a, a, a specific color or a printout or a product or whatever it might be and they want you to try and print that color. What you can do is take your chart that you've printed out and you can then match to that color. So 
I'll just show you an example for a minute. So bear with me one moment. Let's just jump across to the webcam view here. And let's say I've got my color chart. So here's my color chart. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and match a color to this color chart. So bear with me. I've got a Pantone swatch book, which is what I'm going to try and match. Although Versaworks does recognize Pantone, it's just going to show you very briefly this kind of process. So what I would like to do is I'd like to match to one of these colors. So I'm going to put that up against my color chart. And we're then going to try and find roughly the right color. Now, whilst I'm matching this, um, what I might want to try and do is isolate the colors. Um, the library colors, I'll come back to that in just a moment, just so the question pop up, pop up there. Okay. So I, what I'm going to do is put on this sheet of paper, which I have, which has got a little hole in the middle, to mask off the colors. Okay. So I can just see the colors that I'm trying to match. This means that my, my eye isn't going to get confused by surrounding colors. Okay. So I'm just masking off the colors to see, and I move my color swatch until I find the most accurate color. Okay. On my, um, on my color chart here, uh, this has separate values going across it. So what we have is I found the color that I thought was the most accurate one. This color is called RDWPR24B. Okay. Um, and what I can do is open up this color chart within my design software. So for example, Adobe Illustrator or Coral Draw, and I can choose the specific color from my color chart and then use that to print, which means I know what the colors are going to look like. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes a bit of sense. But um, if I just jump again uh, back to my screen sharing a moment, and I, what I'll do is I'll just open up um, Adobe Illustrator for you here, and I'll show you that as an example. So uh, let's choose one of these uh, shapes that I have on my design. And on the right hand side here, you can see that I've got a big color chart, which is called the Roland Color Systems Library. This is all of the spot colors from that chart that I just held up. Okay. And what I would do is I'd find the color that was the correct value. So what I could do is search for the one that I said, which was RBW, uh, and it was PR, PR uh, 20. So I was looking at my chart. We are 24B. Okay, there's the color that I found on my screen. So I select that color. It then changes on my screen. And I then use this file to print out through VersaWorks. VersaWorks will recognize where I've used that spot color and it will print exactly the same as my chart that I printed out. So the, the theory is pretty simple in that you print out your color chart onto your material using your machine. You then use this color chart uh, to match to certain colors or to choose your color, whatever it might be. You open up your design software and you use the same swatch palette that refers to this chart. And then when you print it, it will look exactly the same because it's using the same values that it printed when it printed the chart. Um, so a couple of questions have come up there just asking uh, where can they get the color chart? Okay, so if I open up VersaWorks a minute, hopefully on your screens now you can see the um, VersaWorks. And at the top, there's a tab that says Media. And underneath that Media tab, there's an option for Color Chart Type 1. Okay, if I select that Color Chart Type 1, it says that it's going to print the color chart. So it will bring that color chart into my queue, which means I can then print it out onto my on my printer using my printer so that I get the, the correct settings in my environment and on my, in, on my on my actual device. So when you print, okay, that comes into your queue and you can then print it out. You then use that chart to match the colors. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's just close down some of these windows a moment so we can go back to my presentation. Um, now, the only things to note are that uh, when you are matching your colors, so if you do have your color chart and you're matching it up to a specific product or a specific you know, printout or whatever it might be, that when you print out this chart, uh, you have to print it onto your different materials. Because if I print this chart onto uh, 
uh, canvas, for example, is going to look quite different to if I print it out onto um, glossy vinyl or if I print it out onto um, banner, for example. So you print this out onto your different materials and then you use the different printouts to match to depending on your output. You also uh, need to try and color match in the correct light environment. So at the moment, I'm sat inside this room where uh, the sun's coming in through the window. Um, so I'm color matching in effectively sunlight, which is the correct color matching environment if my product was going to, or my end print was going to be outdoors, because the colors will look the same being in the same light source. Um, if I was under strip lights within an office, then the colors would look slightly different, in which case you may need to tweak um, your colors because they would look different if you then took them outside. So just to be aware that you need to try and color match in the correct light source. Um, that's a very brief and quick overview of the difference between using process colors, CMYK and RGB, and using spot colors within your design and how the RIP will interpret, interpret those differently. Okay, so color management, CMYK and RGB colors, which will be uh, tweaked slightly depending on the color management options that you choose. Spot colors, however, have their own sets of values, which means that they bypass the color management options that you choose with Inversaworks. And they use their own sets of values where they've got their own input and their own output. Okay? Hopefully that all made sense. Um, so what I will do is just jump through over to this, some of these questions. So uh, let's just mark some of these as questions a minute. Okay, so pop this up on the screen a minute. So, do you need a Pantone swatch along with the chart? If so, which swatch is best? I don't want to buy five if I can help it. Good question. Okay, so Pantones um, are a different spot library. Okay, so we have the Roland Color Systems Library, which has a chart built into VersaWorks that you can print out. So the idea, as I said, is the chart's built in. You print this out onto your different materials. This one's just been mounted onto some board. Uh, and you can then use that for color matching, regardless of content. Okay, so if, if you're not matching to a physical sample or uh, you just want to choose a specific color. Okay, but it's not all of the colors that your printer can print. Um, if you want to match two Pantones, Pantones will actually be recognized by VersaWorks. So VersaWorks will recognize the Pantones that you're using, and within the file format tab within VersaWorks, you can choose what happens to those Pantones. So if we just jump back to my screen for a moment, and if I open up VersaWorks again, um, if you choose a job, so this job that I have you guys can hopefully see on the screen. Um, if I go down to the file format tab, you should be able to see a sort of beige and like a darker red color on the screen. Now, on the left hand side of the file format tab here, it shows me that it's recognized a Pantone and one of my VersaWorks colors. So this file's got a Pantone and a VersaWorks swatch color. If I click on that details box, it shows me what that is happening to these spot colors. So the Pantone color actually has an what's called an LAB library value and it shows me that the printer output is going to be 10.6 for the cyan channel, 11.1 for the magenta, 42.2 for yellow, and 33.1 for black. What that means is those are the process values that my printer is going to use in order to achieve that Pantone color. So I don't actually have to match my printout to a Pantone in that example because the Pantone is recognized by VersaWorks and is going to be printed accurately. Okay. If, however, you do want to have a, um, a Pantone swatch, as you mentioned, um, and you want to be able to use it to match to, so let's just go here. So uh, the, the color book that I would recommend is uh, one called the uh, Color Bridge. Okay, think now the Color Bridge, um, I've got a very old one here, just as an example for you. So it says the Pantone Color Bridge. This actually shows you um, on one side, the Pantone values, and on the other side, the CMYK equivalent. Okay, uh, it's a very good book for understanding the difference between CMYK and Pantone. 
don't want to go into too much depth of talking about pantones, but that's the book that I would probably recommend. It's very good for talking to people about colour because it has both the um, the pantone values and the CM1K equivalent values on them. So if you are going to be buying a book, that's the one that I would probably recommend. Uh, another question here was, can you print a metallic colour chart? If you have metallic ink, yes, is the simple answer. And so when you went into VersaWorks and we went to the media tab at the top, um, when we went down to the drop down menu, there was an option for the colour chart type one. If you have metallic ink in your machine, it also has an option for a metallic colour chart. All you need to do is change your queue settings okay, to a metallic profile and then import the color, metallic colour chart and print it out and it will print using the metallic values. So, yes, you can print a metallic colour chart. Okay, a few more questions. Just a sec. Uh, how can you accurately replicate a spot colour to make a JPEG picture for use on the web? Blimey. <laughs> okay. Um, you can't is my going to be my answer, <laughs> okay? Because um, when you're talking about on the web, everybody's going to view that web color from a different device, okay? So um, I might be viewing your website on my mobile phone. Somebody else may be viewing your website on their desktop. My mobile phone and their desktop are going to show colors differently because they're different devices. So it's pretty much impossible to show a very accurate color unless everybody's got color managed screens and devices, which they're not going to have. So it's a it's a bit of a loaded question, I guess, asking, can you um, do that? I mean, you can choose a Pantone and put it into, um, into a design uh, and then load it up onto your website and it will show as best as it can. Uh, however, it, Everybody's going to view it on a different device, so it's going to look different on different devices. Um, but yeah, if you just choose a Pantone and you and you say you have a Pantone within a design file and you convert it to CM1K, it will do its best job in the conversion anyway. Uh, another question here on the quality tab in VersaWorks at the bottom where it had pre press general US and max impact. Is there a difference between the options or not? Yes, is the answer. Uh, there's the difference between all of the options that you have as presets in VersaWorks. So if I just quickly uh, jump back to sharing my screen for a minute here and I open up a job in VersaWorks. Uh, bear with me, there we go. And we go down to one of the color management presets. So one of the ones you asked about there was max impact. So if I select max impact and I click on the properties, uh, just below in the color management window, it, it opens up a window here that that gives me it, well, it tells me what options that color management profile is using. So the options are um, whether the profile uses embedded color information within the design file or not, which is the bottom option. Whether it's going to preserve um, primary color values, which means 100% values within the design. Um, if not, either if not using the embedded ICC profile, or if there is not one, uh, it can choose what's called an input profile for um, RGB and CMYK data within that design, which is what, what's called the simulation target profile. And then we've got something called the matching method, which is uh, for it's got, you can choose a different option for both raster and vector information. Raster being pixels, basically, uh, and vector being vector information. That's um, if, for example, uh, hopefully you guys can see me on the screen now, um, my color space, this is just a little visual representation of my printer is this big, and the image that I'm trying to print has a color space that's this big, how does it take the colors from the bigger one and squash them into the smaller color space? That's pretty much what a matching method is. So without going, uh, I, I can't give you a quick answer to that stuff. Um, this is something that we go through on a, the intermediate digital print course that we, that we run at the academy because it takes a little while to, to explain and go through. Uh, we'd be here for, for, for a little while if I needed to go into too much depth with that. Um, but that's effectively what the matching method is. So each of the color management presets will, will have different versions of how it does, how it creates this data and how it interprets it coming through the RIP. 
Um, and there isn't a, a right or a wrong because color is very subjective and it depends on the image and the file and the information that's coming through. So, sorry, not the, uh, <laughs> maybe not the um, ideal answer you were hoping for, but um, yes, there is a difference between the different um, quality tab options uh, for the color management presets, is, is my quick answer. Um, how do color profiles work? Um, if you could clarify there, Helen, what you mean, because uh, color profiles, there are two different types of color profiles in terms of the artwork, so that, that there's things called input profiles and there's things called output profiles. So an input profile is the color information that's attached to a file. So if, for example, I take a photo on my digital camera and I then bring that file into my computer, that um, digital camera would have attached information to that photo. So when I then want to print it, what my RIP can do is look at the information attached to that image and use that information when it's printing. So that's what's called an input profile. That's part of a color profile. Um, that could, if it wasn't a photo, that might have been attached to your design file via your, um, via your design program. So Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Cold Draw, whatever it might be. Okay. Then you've got something called an output profile. Now an output profile tells your printer how to print colors correctly. And an output profile is embedded into the media profile that you choose within VersaWorks. So say for example, I choose generic banner as my media profile, that generic banner profile will have color inf uh, information telling VersaWorks how to print accurate color onto the banner. Hopefully that's a bit of a, an answer to your uh, to your questions there. Um, let's just have a quick look. So, some more questions. Um, if you're outsourcing printing to another company, is it best to let them also do the file preparation for color accuracy? It depends on what on their understanding of color and also on what printer and, or what what type of device they're using. So. Hopefully most printers would understand the difference between different formats and different things. So um, if they're a Roland printer, you could always specify Roland spot colors within your design. You can specify Pantones. If you specify CMYK values, like I mentioned, they can fluctuate or depend or vary depending on what device they're going to be printing. So um, I would ask them, ask the person, ask the printing company that you're using, you know, what, how do they want their artwork? What kind of colors do they want specified? Uh, and, they, and they should be able to tell you. So, um, or you can leave it to them and specify, you know, I want it to look like this Pantone value, for example, and they should be able to use their printing methods in order to achieve that. Another question here, is it best to print a photo image in RGB or CMYK? As, we've, as I've sort of been um, alluding to with color, there's no straight answers, okay? So uh, there's an argument for both of the options there. Okay, so it, the color, a photograph would have been taken within the RGB color space. So a digital camera, your phone, whatever it might be, will have taken that photo in RGB, which means there's a theory to say, leave it in RGB, okay, because that's its default color space. What color management can do within your RIP is convert from RGB into CMYK using a predetermined set of, um, of limits of uh, features, if you will. So the color management module will, will take it from RGB into CMYK, and you have control over how it does that using the color management presets. If you convert your photo to CMYK before you bring it into VersaWorks, before you bring it into your RIP, your design software would be doing that conversion, but you have no control over it. That's the difference. So if you flatten an image from RGB to CMYK within your design software, your design software does that conversion. Uh, and then when you save it, it will apply a new CMYK profile to the image. So it, there's no straight answer, but I'm, I'm, I guess my, if I had to choose, I would say leave it as RGB and let your color management manage the conversion rather than flattening it within your artwork and bring it in as CMYK. Or photos. 
Uh, Helen clarifying there that it was ICC profiles. So yeah, there's two types of ICC profiles. There's input and there's output. Input is the information attached to a file or an image. Output is how your printer is going to print those colors actually. Another question here, uh, can you override printer to match printer output to library output and versa? Can you override printer to match printer output library output uh, yes if the I think I understand what you're asking there if the uh, library output is something that you can specify so if it's a CMYK library output yes you can override what Verseworks is going to do with it um, if it was the whole file and you just wanted to print it using the CMYK values that are within that file you can choose density control only within Verseworks which means it's just going to use the values okay uh, that's one of the color management options, which basically turns off the color management and we just print the file as is, so it would just use the default values of process values, so CMYK values. If it's a spot color and you want it to just use the CMYK values, you can do that within uh, the file format tab. So again, let's just jump onto my screen here. And if we go to the file format tab and we open up the details box, down the bottom it says edit output color. So it gives you the option to um, either choose a different spot color li library or specify CMYK values there. So yes, you can override and change spot colors as well uh, within Versaworks. You can also swap them for other spot colors if you wanted to. So hopefully that's answered your question there, Rachel. Um, do, 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 what else have we got here? How do... Sorry, no question. Um, how do we import Versaworks color swatch into Coral Draw? Okay, uh, this is an easy ish one to answer. You don't have to import them, they're already built in, is the answer. Uh, bear with me a moment and let me just open up Coral. Two seconds. Just got to load Coral a moment. So, um, you, with, uh, with Illustrator, you'd have to import them, okay? and uh, both of the libraries, should you need them, for the Coral and for, um, for Illustrator, uh, are within the program files of Versaworks Jewel or Versaworks. So if you've got a Versaworks installed on your computer, um, you can go into the program files and you can find the color libraries. They are within the program files of Versaworks Jewel. There, oh, let me just follow myself so I'm not going to talk for that a minute. There, so they're in, uh, under your C drive, program files x86. You then go into the program files for Versaworks Jewel or Versaworks, depending on which one you have. Now, under swatches, you have the swatch palettes in there for Coral Draw and Illustrator. So that's one way. However, if I just pull up um, Coral Draw onto my screen, hopefully you guys can see Coral now. And um, in order to open up the role and color systems library, you just need to go to open up your color palette manager, which you can open by going to the window menu at the top, into the dockers option, and open up your color palette manager, which will open on the right hand side of it. So I've already got my color palette manager open. Okay. Um, what you then need to do is go to the palette libraries drop down menu, which has got a little um, key, uh, uh, key, pa uh, sorry, key lock symbol next to it. And then you get down to spot colors. And within there, you have HKS, Pantone, and Roland. If you choose the Roland ones. Within there, you have the Roland Color Systems Library option, which you've got a little I symbol next to it. So you turn that on, and that will open up your role in the color systems library. Okay. And then you can just choose the swatches from there. Hopefully that uh, that has answered your, your query about coral there. Let me just jump back to the question mode in a second. Uh, another question, can you use the library output slash spot, spot colors with Wasatch? I don't know how spot colors work in Wasatch is the answer. Um, so uh, I don't know. Um, I'm sure that it will have some kind of spot colors feature built into it. 
Uh, you won't be able to use the Roland spot colors because they are Roland spot colors built into VersaWorks only. So um, you won't be able to use the Roland ones, but I'm sure it will have some feature for using spot colors, but uh, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. Uh, let's have a look. Any other questions that we've got here? Is there a way to deal with out of gamut colors other than brightening the image to avoid strong blacks? Is there a way to deal with out of gamut colors other than brightening the image to avoid strong blacks? Okay. Out of gamut colors mean that, as I mentioned earlier, it depends. Are you talking about uh, spot colors or are you talking about um, RGB values? Would be, would be my question back to you there, Gary. Um, just a moment. Uh, in photo images, okay. So if, if you're talking about a photo image, um, basically the photo will be from RGB, okay, which is a color space, for example, this big, CMYK is this big, so if you've got colors around the outside, it uses matching methods or rendering intents in order to squash those colors. Okay, there's different ways it can do that. Okay, the, the, uh, and the ones that are used in VersaWorks are um, perceptual, colorimetric, uh, saturation, um, relative colorimetric. Perceptual, sorry, I'm confusing myself now. Um, bear with me a moment. Into our color management. So we have, uh, yeah, sorry, perceptual, colorimetric, saturation, and absolute. Ones. So um, those will interpret how it squashes that information slightly differently. Uh, what I would recommend is that you try uh, and see the different methods of how they work. Um, what, what they mean is like saturation is probably the least accurate, um, perceptual and colorimetric will import that information slightly differently. It's, it's how, how they bring in the out of gamut colors. Um, when you're talking about strong blacks, you've got, a, you've got something called um, black point. Uh, I can't remember the name at the moment. Um, but uh, basically, the black within RGB is deeper than it is within CMYK. So when you're converting the image across, do you try and bring up the black in line with the CMYK or within the whole image? Um, or or, or how do you do it? I assume that's what you mean by um, avoiding strong blacks. What I would say is, 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 is I try a demo image for yourself, Gary, and try it with the different color management options and see what happens. Uh, often a visual representation is going to help you more. Um, and I don't know what you're going to, um, what, what you would consider to be a better output because, as I said, it's all very subjective. So what you can do, yeah, is take, take your image and bring it in. Uh, within VersaWorks, you can nest jobs together. So bring in the same image 10 times, nest those jobs together. Within your nest, you can apply different kind of management settings to each job and then print them uh, with the um, printer label at the bottom so you know which uh, color management setting was applied to which image and then print those and check the difference between them, which should give, give you uh, a few different options which you could then choose. Sorry, so let's go back to the... Question answer. How do you use Roland spot colors if the Illustrator design computer is remote from the one using VersaWorks? Uh, you can take the spot library from the program files and in, install it into Illustrator on the other computer, is the answer. So if you go into the program files for VersaWorks and you find the Illustrator spot library, stick it on a USB stick, take it to the other computer and install it into your spot library the answer to that one, so I hope that's made sense. Uh, here's another question. So today I used JPEG as a background image and I faded it out using the transparency tool with control. However, when it printed, the fade ended suddenly rather than looking gradual as it did on screen. Any ideas how I could fix this? Um, no, I'm not a whiz in coral, I'm afraid. I'm better in an uh, Illustrator and Photoshop myself. Um, I'm not too sure. However, uh, it might have been how you exported the file. It might be a file type. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, you could have tried a different color kind of management setting to see if it did something different. Um, but if it's if it's ending abruptly, it might just be that 
the kind of information. I'm not, I'm not too sure. What I'd say is try some of the different kind of management settings to see, uh, to print a smaller version so you're not wasting yourself some space. But I'm afraid I, I'm not too sure on that one. Um, there was not somebody saying flat and transparencies there. So let's just cut, clean up a couple more of these questions. Can you recommend a resource for making sense of using color management, e.g., choosing working spaces, input and output IC profiles, or monitor profiles, and how they work with each other? <laughs> 16 years' experience, still don't understand these. Yep, it's tricky. Color management isn't very straightforward. Uh, as I mentioned, on, um, as a resource to, to look at online, uh, I could recommend a book to you which would help um you, uh, I need to find what it's, it's called color management i think uh, i just need to find the uh author for you bear with me a moment let me try and find that for you give us a moment um but yeah it is quite it is quite complex um, monitor profiles then obviously are going to play quite a big part uh input icc output using um, a spectrum automaton to create your own um, bits and bobs, it, it is confusing. Uh, Colour is not very straightforward, and if you've got 16 years in it and you still don't understand them, um, I'd, I'd recommend coming to on the training course, obviously. Um, we, do, we do a certain level of colour management on the intermediate digital print course, um, and just as a little heads up, I'm, we're looking at the Roland Academy to try and introduce an advanced course, um, cover these off in a lot more depth for you. And so then we would be looking at um, how this is going to work with your screen and profiling uh, and all the rest of it. So oh, bear with me a minute, I'm just going to find this book for you. So the book I was saying is called Colour Management uh, by Bruce and Chris Murphy and Ed Bunting. It's, uh, it's produced by Real World. Okay, so... Uh, Colour Management, Real World, Bruce Fraser, Chris Murphy and Fred Bunting, that's quite a good book. That should give you a pretty good idea uh, and it will cover off a lot more of the generic stuff as well. Let's get into print. Um, if I print an image on, say, my colour laser printer, how do I ensure that I can replicate the colours when printed via Versaworks? Uh, with your laser printer, I don't know how it will interpret. Color, or if it even has any options for color management. Uh, it may not, it may just print it as is. Also, it's going to use different inks. So um, unless you're using the same material on your laser printer than you are that you are in, in, in VersaWorks, they're going to look different anyway. You know, if I print um if I uh, I don't know how to how to, how to use a, a some kind of a real world example that, that, that would kind of replicate this but if i print using my yeah using my roland inks via an inkjet print head onto a glossy white vinyl it's going to look different to if i print using inkjet laser inks uh, laser inks onto a sheet of a4 paper the two are not comparable so it'd be very very difficult to make those look the same okay uh, you're trying to match across different devices, which is a very difficult thing to do. If your laser was also printing onto glossy white vinyl, maybe you'd be able to match it. Now, if you printed out a sample and used it to color match to a spot color, then it's going to be different. Um, as I said, we do try and talk through uh, a lot of this color management stuff on, on our print course, where we're going to um, talk about why this happens within color management in more depth, which will give you a better understanding, which means you might be able to um, Go home and experiment and we'll work that out for yourself, I guess. Um, something somebody else asked, try exporting as EPS, not PDF. Um, different file formats have been, oh, that was probably an answer to the um, to the color fade issue that you had within Coral, or flattened transparencies, that was another option uh, within Coral there. Um, what was that about the role in the academy? It broke up all the time. Oh, sorry, I think that was because I was trying to uh, look online to find that book. It just used up a little bit of my bandwidth. Um, the Roland Academy, we run uh, introductions to digital print courses, intermediate digital print courses, and we're looking to introduce an advanced course. And on the advanced course, we would mainly be talking about um, color and color profiles and how you can profile your machine and how color works through from design, uh, designing 
programs and how they have color profiles, ICC profiles for input, and a bit more about how you can create output profiles within your RIP. We don't do that at the moment, however, we do do an intermediate course which does cover a lot of this in pretty much as much depth as most people will need. Um, however, we are looking to uh, introduce a uh, advanced course. Um, Alan just said, cheers, is that something that you try to use in a Bear with me a minute, just catching up on these messages. Uh, Is that something you're doing? Oh, that was somebody saying about flattening the transparencies. I was typing now. So yes, you can you can flatten transparencies. I imagine within Coral. I know how to do it in Illustrator. Um, this I probably flatten the screen. Use Illustrator, not Coral, but flatten transparencies often deals with funky output effects with things like that. Yeah. Uh, same when you're choosing your PDF or your output settings. So if you choose PDF. X1A, that's like one of the oldest settings and it tends to not have as many issues as, as some of the newer ones do. Um, there's options for flattening transparencies, there's options for uh, maintaining spot colors when they, when they export. There's all sorts of different settings within, um, within your output settings. Uh, for, just as a, something of interest, when you're in Illustrator and you export using the generic Illustrator settings for PDF, it doesn't actually take uh, embedded uh, ICC profiles from images that are put into your document. So you might want to choose a uh, one of the presets within Illustrator is the high quality print and something like that. I think that does then take um, the color settings with it when it exports. Which is a little bit interesting. Um, there we go. Sorry, Alan saying he uses Illustrator to flatten. Uh, that's about it at the moment, it looks like, from all the questions that have been popping up in the chat there. Um, if anybody's got any other quick questions, we can try and answer them. Hopefully that's helped give you a bit of an understanding um, about colour. Uh, as I said, this was a kind of an introduction to, uh, we could be here for hours talking about uh, how to match certain colours, what spot colours do when they come through, um, flattening images, uh, input profiles, output profiles, all the rest of it. This was just kind of a little bit of an overview for you. Uh, mainly talking about color management. So when you use process colors, CM1K and RGB, those go into your RIP and the color management settings that you have within VersaWorks will then um, interpret that information slightly differently and give you slightly different results. Uh, if you use spot colors, they are not affected by the color management settings you use. They use their own sets of values and they uh, force themselves, so to speak, through the RIP, meaning that you've got um, output that you know what's going to happen and how it's going to look. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Um, <coughs> Angus just asked me, were there any books I recommend on large format printing? There is, but I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, I can't remember. I, I have to dig it out. Um, so uh, there are a few, but it, they're, all, they're very generic and it depends what you're talking about. Um, so if you, if you have a Roland, um, Obviously, I'd recommend um, studying how it works within Roland. Uh, and there's only a certain amount of information that you get within VersaWorks. Uh, obviously, we've got the Roland Academy, I've mentioned that already. Um, but there is one that I that I read that I thought was quite good. Uh, if you ping me um, an email, Angus, uh, or you can find me on online as well. I'm on uh, my, my Facebook name, for example, is Joe Roland DG. Uh, if you find me on there, or if you ping me an email, my email address is jwigzel at rolandsdg.com. My last name is spelled W-I-G-Z-E-L-L. -L. Uh, you can ping me an email and I'll try and dig it out and send you a link uh, if you like afterwards. Uh, any plans for a webinar on job management? Um, sorry, somebody's been through another question there. Uh, on job management. Job management meaning um, processes within how you're going to look after your jobs, how they come through the RIP and things. If that's what you mean, uh, yeah, it can be. Um, any, any suggestions from you guys on what, on what you'd like to see in webinars is great. Um, yes, we could do one on job management. Um, and let's put one in. Uh, I think we've got the next four already decided. <laughs> so uh, I, I'll stick it on the list and I'll, and I'll try and book one in for you guys. Uh, keep an eye on the website for the, the next upcoming webinars. We're doing them sort of over two weeks at the moment. If you guys are finding them useful, you know, maybe we can look to do them a little bit more often. 
Um, and if you guys have got any specific requirements, just, just ping them over and we'll see if we can, can take them off. But hopefully you found today useful. Uh, as I say, if you do want to watch this back, hopefully we'll have these available online fairly soon for you to be able to look back um, and read over those. Um, yeah, any more questions, get in touch. Um, otherwise, five to five. But, but better finish up for the day um, and hopefully see you guys soon. Take it steady.